Hello friends, this is Self-Critical Automaton, your simulated parasocial crush, and this is episode 5 of my Let's Play of Mist. We're picking up exactly where we left off and diving right in, almost literally, to have a look and see what is hidden down here in this underwater place where the lights have clearly not come on, despite everything I did to try and get them to turn on last episode. That's less than ideal, so let's see if we can figure out what I did wrong and solve that. We'll be right back. Well, it appears to have been a generator issue, so let's try this again. And we got nothing. I went and I cranked and I cranked and I cranked. And yet the generator does not appear to be lighting up the underground, even though I absolutely have done the quest. So that's still nice and fully charged, so... Exactly what am I doing wrong? That's the real question. Let's have a look back in the underground and see if we can... wait, how was it? Is it was one of my... yeah. And see if we can figure out... I mean, redoing that same quest thingy, that same puzzle, might just solve the problem, so let's, let's do that. <laughs> one thing I should mention that I keep forgetting to bring back up... Uh, zero, one, two, three... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There we go. Let's put the underwater lights back on. Is that I am not playing on the original 1993 version of Mist. That would be more difficult than <laughs> than I really have time to set up. We are, of course, playing on Mist Masterpiece Edition. Although this is my copy from back then, which is the 2000 re-release of Mist, which included uh, upgraded visuals, very slightly upgraded visuals, uh, a higher resolution, and almost no other changes to the game. That looks more like it. The only actual additions to the game are a hints system, which is built in, which is why I try and avoid clicking down here so that I don't bring it up unnecessarily, and a what it calls a zip system, which is a, a system of shortcuts that you zap back around to previous areas you've already visited, Essentially inventing fast travel, something like two decades early, but um, in a way that is low-key kind of not very useful. There have been a lot of versions of Mist over the years. Is this... this is just a table. Ooh. Well, the music in there is almost deafening, so I'm glad I could get out. Let's go hand some pages in and I'll continue to ramble and waffle and, and mumble and talk whatever the fuck about whatever the fuck. Right, blue book. How are you coming along, Akinar? Say free speech? Free, which is endless. Which is probably obvious to you. The evil and he has destroyed all before. Do not bring the red pages to him. Not let him trip you. He tripped our father. So, he's begging us to bring the blue pages, insisting it's absolutely vital, and also says that I should not bring the red pages to let uh, Cirrus out of his book. That Cirrus betrayed and murdered their father, which is a, a classic quote from Star Wars, unintentionally. I don't know if you've heard of this, this, this popular, popular film series, Star Wars. It's pretty good, you should check it out. Not a lot of people know about it. Anyway, so he's insisting that Cirrus has, has murdered their father, or alternatively trapped their father in a book as well, and that if I don't let him out, Cirrus might trap us in a book too, which seems like it's not a fun existence. So I don't trust either of these guys as far as I can throw them, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run back 
off to the other age, find the other page, and see what Sirius has to say about this. Because the question at the moment is still, which of these brothers should we trust? They both seem to be saying the other is untrustworthy. But in terms of their actual character as presented through the objects that they own, the game is clearly setting up an implication that you should side with Cirrus against Akinar, because Akinar's this ooh, crazy serial killer guy, ooh, suspicious, ooh, threatening, ooh, unstable, and so on. You know, all of his accoutrements are these kind of, like, violent, unpleasant tools. These signs of, of domination. Whereas, you know, Cirrus is, is respectable. He's he's trustworthy, almost. He's, he's He likes refined things, and he speaks well and sensibly. But of course, this itself is a red herring. They fairly clearly lay the seeds to uh, understand that while Akinar might be obsessed with domination and cruelty, Cirrus himself is <laughs> equally obsessed with exploitation. We mustn't forget that, you know, for all they, they argue, oh, that's, that's a nice detail that I can shut that. I'm sure that will never ever be relevant or come in handy, but it's a nice little thing anyway. Yeah, so, we should just never ever trust either of them because, you know, they both had thrones. Their father didn't have thrones, or a throne even. Their father spoke about, you know, helping these people or trying to understand them. Whereas these two both seem to be exploiting them and bringing about their deaths very often. Let's not forget there were severed heads on the walls in, <laughs> in Akinar's room. But there were also chests full of pointless gold in Cirrus's secret chamber. I'm sure one of these has the note in. There it is. Let's grab this and head back. But yeah, so there have been a lot of different versions of Mist over the years. There was obviously the first version in 1993, and then in 2000, after a decade of, you know, relentless popularity, there was, of course, the, uh, there was, of course, the Real Mist remake, which was a an interesting update that actually rendered the game in full 3D. Instead of being the static slideshow of pre-rendered images, it actually began to live render the game's uh, areas, which was considered to be a kind of a, a beautiful update, and wow, look, isn't it amazing what technology can do, but I actually think it's a lot uglier. There's, a, there's, a, there's an irony to that, really, because while Mist's pre-rendered images have a charm to them, that um, they retain even to this day by being these sort of like decently resolution pre-rendered images. The 3D live rendering used in Real Mist obviously looks like absolute garbage now. Which means uh, that the, the remaster of this game that was so praised at the time is actually worse than just going back and playing the original. Or the ma original Masterpiece ed Edition, which actually came out the same year. This is the wrong room. Because it was in 2000 that both Real Mist, the live rendering update, and... Is it this one? Oh, I should count, actually. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Due southeast, I should remember that. Not that I'm ever coming back here after this one. But yeah, so in the, sa in the same year, um, that remaster came out, and also... Missed Masterpiece Edition, which was just the high-resolution update of the original game. I have my copy of Masterpiece Edition, which I've had for a very long time. So it made sense to play it with this. But there are actually several other re-releases and remakes. Real Mist itself got a Masterpiece Edition later on. And of course there have been many ports, including the recent Steam port, which, which includes uh, complete re-renders of the game. All of the art has been completely recreated and updated, and it honestly looks quite different. I haven't played it, so I don't know if the vibes are the same, but um, it's interesting that they went to that extent. That was actually, I believe, created by the, the same people who made the original game. They've now updated it. Also, amusingly, there was a parody game released, which actually received like a full actual release called Pissed, even though it actually commits the sin that Mist was accused of by being an actual slide sh slideshow. The theming, theming of Pist being that you are the, like, hundredth visitor to the island. Everybody else has been yelling about Mist for years, so everybody's run through it. So what you find are that all of the puzzles have already been solved and there's graffiti and trash everywhere and so on. It's a kind of a one-note joke, and the entire game is just the slideshow. There's no actual puzzles in it. 
let's see what he has to say. Have returned. So, interestingly, while they both accuse the other of being some kind of horrible, evil degenerate, Cirrus offers you material reward, whereas Akinor just insists that he has to be released because, well, who else is going to stop the guy who imprisoned their father? Which is, is kind of curious. I love this difference between them, the way that one of them is constructed as this self-constructed. He's clearly composed and calm and also calculatedly saying what he thinks is the correct thing to say. Whereas Akinar is... might be... he might be evil? He's probably evil. He seems to have severed heads in his room. But he's completely unsubtle, unpretentious. He is just completely who he is and doesn't really make any excuses or have any questions about that. He just... I'm, I'm the guy who sounds irrational. Please do the thing. Please don't do the other thing. Just... <laughs> And then, like, I'm actually more inclined to trust him because of that than I am inclined to trust Akana. <laughs> to, to trust Cirrus, rather, simply because. It feels like Cirrus is lying and it feels like Akana is not lying, even though they both clearly are up to something. Anyway, time to go see what the next thing is. So let's run and scurry and hurry and hop in the lift up to the library, up to the tower to have a look out the window and see where we're going to go next. It's a prime window of opportunity. Also, I love that um, somehow in 1993 they almost predicted the I see you are a man of culture as well meme, which is hilarious. All right, so it looks like it's the giant tree in the forest, at the base of which was the weird gasp puzzle that we found ages and ages ago. This one says 724, so let's note that down. And then we can head back over there. There was definitely a safe in that room, so I think it's fair to assume that this is the combination to that safe. Which is weird, but let's go for it anyway and see what happens. It's kind of fascinating the changes that they made with Real Miss, incidentally. Obviously that was seven years after the original game came out, but they didn't that they didn't just remaster the game, it was actually a, a full remake. They added, in fact. A whole new zone, which is a, a snowy, mountainous themed zone, which may or may not be the mountains depicted in the topographical test that we saw way back in episode one. I haven't played Real Mist because honestly I think the live rendering is so much uglier than the uh, than the pre-rendering that the game actually uses in the original version. But um, it also makes some other gameplay changes. I believe some of the puzzles are tweaked slightly. And also there is an addition to the island which sort of brings it in line with later lore. Because one of the things people forget about Myst is that it actually became a franchise. It became a hugely popular and long-running series that spawned n novels 
There was there was a whole series of books. Later, there was an MMO. It's um, it's remarkable just how huge an impact this had and how widespread it became. Like, like it's a seven, it's a five to seven game series with novel series and an MMO. It's it's crazy. Seven two four. Let's have a look. Geez, it's matches. Who knew? Well, I don't know about you, but I believe matches can be used to ignite a pilot light on an old gas stove. <laughs> So let's turn on the gas and not kill ourselves, hopefully. Do I need to increase it? This might be the hardest puzzle. It's certainly the one that always really s s stopped me when I was a kid. I would hit this point and I would just not be able to figure out how to, how to go any further. We don't have any further clues about how to use this, and I don't know about you, but I haven't really used a gas stove in the modern day. <laughs> We clearly need to ignite something. Interestingly, one of the reasons for the success that Mist originally had was that it was kind of seen as the anti-Doom, at the same time as PC gaming became... Oh, hang on. Aha! At the same time as... Doom was becoming this really popular thing, and PC gaming therefore became known as this sort of like extremely violent medium for, for violent people who like violent things. There was this, uh, how do I increase the pressure? It seems like I need to increase the pressure in there since it says, like that's a pressure gauge, right? PSI, PS, something like that. If I, what happens if I turn it up? But yeah, so, at a time when when games was were seeing seen to be starting to go from being harmless children's entertainment to being actual like violence focused, and there began to be these backlashes against it, especially considering the ongoing satanic panic of the late eighties that that spilled into the nineties to some extent. There was this definite. Is something about to happen? Uh, aha. Okay, is that bad? Sounds like it overdid it. Maybe I need to turn it off once it gets high enough? So yeah, there was this um, there was this idea that Mist was a, a safe game for, for children, you know? Where... Oh, maybe, maybe a consistent pressure? It's just this... It's this cool place where you vibe and you solve logic puzzles. I think that was a part of the contribu contribution to a success. its success, especially when they then, you know, managed to take that vibe and continue it significantly through several games. And, um, you know, Riven, the sequel to Myst, the amazing subtitle there, is one of my favourite games of all time to this day, simply because its vibes are so delightful. I feel like I need to keep this at a particular level for a certain amount of time, but I don't know which level it is or how long I need to keep it there. I might be barking up the wrong tree. That's definitely a pressure gauge. Hmm, okay. Is it gonna overload again? Or is it gonna work? Regardless, I do think there's a lot to recommend the later games in, in Myst, but Riven, Riven will always be my favorite. It's also interesting that that MMO was a, you know, a puzzle-focused MMO. How does one... <laughs> How does one even design such a thing? I haven't played it, because sadly it doesn't really exist anymore, although I think there is a fan-based revival project. Like, how could how could you run an MMO that isn't based on combat? This is a, a problem that we have in the games industry overall, is how do you make games that aren't based around combat? Because combat is such an easy, simple challenge and resolution mechanic that it's just honestly not surprising it's become the default. People talk a lot about how, oh well, maybe if in the early days we had put so much effort into things that weren't combat becoming the default, perhaps the industry would have developed in such a way that, you know, combat was not so so widespread, so, so that violence was not the default in video games. But you've got to remember that in the early days of computer games, the by far most popular genre, even after Doom came out for a long time, were still graphical adventures, point-and-click adventures, puzzle-solving games. Anyway, I'm clearly doing something wrong here, so I think I'll have to have a think about this, and we'll come back next episode to see what I am doing wrong. Uh, there clearly must be a solution. And it 
definitely is not in here. There's no, there's no other things to click. There doesn't seem to be any other interactable element. This is, um, this is kind of the the reason for the the popular memes about mist. Is something happening? Oh my gosh! Did something happen? Or did it overload? I guess it overloaded. What happens if I go outside? What happens if I come out here and turn around and look? It's not like I've actually seen the tree. Is this at the... Oh, there's the... Tr oh, okay, the tree's over here. I didn't realise the tree was, was accessible or visible. Interesting. Okay, what happens if I turn the pressure up? And we get it. We get it nice and toasty. And then we'll go have a look, and then, and then I'll, I'll 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 join you next time after we see if this is the solution. I'm not sure how how mechanical this is, how tied to the rate of change the uh, the burner is. Oh, it doesn't seem to have done anything. Is it even still running? Maybe the simulation doesn't run when I'm not in that room. You never know. Can I look up? Yeah. So I think we're going to have to come back next time to figure out what this is. So that's going to be all from me for today. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe and especially share. And check out my Twitch channel for regular streams. On Twitter you can find announcements and one tweet micro reviews. And if you like what I do and want to support me you can donate on Patreon or Ko-fi. The links are all in the description and thank you so much for watching.